Hey guys, Basil and Will from Grayson Hobby, and today we have something a little different. Yep, we have a cell checker that also doubles as a receiver signal tester. So what the heck does that mean? Stay tuned to find out what we're talking about. If you're new to this channel, Grayson Hobby is a shop located outside of Atlanta, Georgia, where we sell and ship out quads and airplanes and drone parts and everything of sorts. And everything you see on our website is located here in our good old USA warehouse right outside of Atlanta. Um, sold under a couple different brands I already have seen. Um, but nevertheless, it's all the same stuff. So let me know, let us know if you like this thing or if it's just a piece of junk you're never gonna use or you don't care about your battery health. I mean, I'm gonna crash my battery after two flights anyway, right. so what's the point? Right? Exactly, send it, right? Yeah, it's defective. <laughs> what? All right guys, so what we have here from Hobby Porter is the MC06 cell checker. This actually doubles as a cell checker and a receiver output signal tester. So you can do like uh, PPM, SBUS, PWM, um, Spectrum 1024, Spectrum 2048, which is DSM-2, dsm -S. Sort, you can test your receivers before you build it. Well, if you have a receiver that you're, like sometimes you have a receiver the dead output port or something like that, this is something you could test it with, whether you have a plane receiver or if you have a satellite receiver or RXSR, et cetera, you could test those um, and set them up kind of thing. Um, and so in some receivers you can bind prior to installing, yes. Yeah. And making sure you don't get it dead because nothing sucks worse than, especially on a quad build, getting that receiver all buried in there, finishing it, and then going to check it and it's not bound or it doesn't work. Let's go ahead and show you something on this one. Um, How do you work this guy? So we're going to plug this guy in. And right now it's in PWM mode, so we're gonna actually cycle through the menus. Okay. This is Volt. Ooh, colors. Yes, it's a nice color graph. You can see a bar graph as well as the actual voltage display. Um, so it plugs in and you can see we actually have one cell on the graph that looks a little lower than the rest. So the colors don't represent like good, bad, or No, it's, it's just... they're just using a gradient color okay. scale. So one is being the top and yeah. the, okay. So let's unplug that. I'm gonna show you with another label. Let's see if this one's any closer. So, and if you're using not a six cell battery, it'll take up to a six cell battery, you go towards the minus. So and I plug guess it in. One to six cell, right? Yep. So, so this one does not have five cell five and six, so they're just reading zero. But you can see here, one, two, three, four, and this one's pretty well balanced. All right, so we got our voltage tested. What numbers am, am I actually looking for here? So on a dead battery, 3.7 or lower is depleted. Okay. 3.85. Uh, 3.8 to 3.85 is about half charge. Okay. That's about 50% capacity um, to the curve of the LiPo. And um, 4.2 on a normal LiPo is fully charged. Okay. 4.35 on a high voltage LiPo is fully okay. charged. So when I come down, what should I store it at? What number When you are it? not using the battery, if you mm -hmm. want to store the battery, typically 3.8, as close to 3.85 as possible is what mm -hmm. I use. And I've had batteries that are a couple years old now mm -hmm. and they're still fine. Um, 3.8 on a lot of cheaper chargers is storage. So you want to keep it between 3.8 and 3.85 per cell. So if you don't know what storage is, basically you go to the a decent charger, will bring up the voltage or down, let's say you crashed on the early in the flight and you still have some charge, it brings down the voltage to 3.8, 3.85, right? Yeah. So that's what storage is. And if you store your batteries, you'll, they'll last like we'll set all Yeah, if you leave a battery fully charged, it's gonna hurt. If you right. leave a battery fully dead, it's gonna hurt it. And anything in between, um, the closer to, the center it seems to be the best as far as the the capacity of the battery. All right, and works out. What works out good for me is if I'm going to fly the next day, I'll charge my batteries the night before, and if I don't get to go weather-wise, whatever, I will immediately put them in storage mode. So I don't let my batteries stay fully charged for more than a few hours, if I'm not going to. Correct. Play. Yeah. Um, the longer, I mean, if the batteries are sitting in storage, better. Plus, the if the battery's not fully dead, it'll charge faster because it's already half charged. All right. So that's what storage mode is. The other part of this. That's your basic cell checker. The other part is receiver signal testing. In order to power the receiver, um, you can either use a the micro USB, the newer USB-C, or the actual balance plug from a LiPo battery. And you can only use one. Now that's the one thing. You cannot plug a USB port in and the LiPo battery. You can actually burn up the little regulator inside yeah. here. Too much power. Yeah. Um, and then the button mode on, is on this side to cycle it on the USB side. The other side is a switch on the USB-C side. Um, the switch controls from 5 volt to 3.3. So if you're running a Spectrum satellite, uh, you need 3.3 volts. If you, pretty much everything else is 5 volt. Okay. Um, 
Only downside to this product is the Spectrum satellite port is actually wrong. It is not a direct plug-in for Spectrum satellites. Okay. A Spectrum satellite will plug in, let's see, a natively is signal, ground, and power. This plug is signal, power, and ground. So you would have to lift the pins up and move them around. It's just like an X-Acto knife, lift up the pins and move them around with an extra harness laying around. All right, so you have a testing harness and you have a flying Yeah, harness. I mean, in that case, being as a satellite, I'm just gonna leave that part for my quad builds and I'm just gonna leave this on the, the okay. cell checker. Gotcha. Um, but. All right, well, let's, enough talk, let's see it work. All right, so the first one we're gonna do is a Spectrum satellite. This particular satellite has an auto bind button, or not an auto bind button, but a bind button on it. Um, if you have the 4648 receiver, it would do auto bind. Other receivers, you would need to bind the receiver externally prior to doing it. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use my jumper radio for this one. All right, so. so now it looks like we're still in the light. We're gonna push the button. Mm -hmm. And this is not 1024, but 2048, because we bound in DSMX. And you can see all these numbers here. Yep. 1500 is neutral. And then you can see all the numbers. Now, Spectrum is a little different than other companies. Uh, 1156 or so is bottom and 1843 is top right. unless you increase the signal. Let's put that right there so we can get that all that same. Now what? Let's let's see. So we can see movement. Yep. Which the green one? That gets easy to see. The green one? Yeah. There we go. Here. No. All right. So basically what we're trying to show is that is like a beta flight screen or something like that you would see kind of it's kind of like the same yeah. thing as a receiver tab actually it's it is the same thing so that's way that way you don't have to hook up your computer yeah you're good to go so all right. so, that's, so spectrum. that's spectrum but i don't fly spectrum i fly a broken free sky so we were on 3.3 volt for the spectrum output i'm going to go ahead and unplug this get it out of the way and i'm going to switch it to 5 volt and then i'm going to put a free sky receiver again looking pads there and this happens to be an xm plus but it's missing one antenna but this thing's been sitting in a drawer and i don't know if it works or not so let's get this in here that does power up that's good so let's get this sucker into bind mode plug in the battery all right we're in bind mode all right finding all right all right so you power right, cycle so power cycled Which and plug in so we are green light let's go and now let me switch over from DSM2, or I'm sorry, DSMX, to S-Bus. All right, so now you know S-Bus. So now with S-Bus, you can see all the tabs moving. And you'll see S-Bus produces 1,000 at bottom end. It looks like 211 at the top end, 208. Now, again, depending on what your radio is set to, it can change those settings there, mm -hmm. but at least you'll be able to look at it. Yeah. So you'll be able to check your receiver, make sure it's working properly, etc. But what if a guy doesn't fly quads? He flies airplanes. Okay, let's do a plane or something. Test out this X6R, X6R for those you guys who fly free sky and airplanes. And then for those who are new in Spectrum, we're gonna test out that guy. Yeah, so now there's two things here. Um, there's S-Bus output we can test, and there's PWM on an X6R. And we'll save the worst for last. Okay, so you plug in that guy. Is it matter? I guess you have to do one port at a time, or how does that work? No, we're we're gonna do S-Bus to show you okay. first. But you're just binding it up here. All right, so, so plugging we're in. Taking a bound X6R, I mount S-Bus, and you can see the movement here. No, I can't. Move your hand. All right, so now we're testing the X6R. All four so you can see the PWM's working, etc. Switches. Now we have eight channel, eight channels of S bus. I don't think there's more. Nope, only does eight channels. Okay. Um. So if I want to check individual signals, because the X6R also has PWM, I would plug in to one of the PWM ports. Okay. Movement of the channel. So we only can test one channel at a time doing the PWM. Yes. We'll always yeah. say channel one. So, so if you want to do each port, you'd have to unplug and move over to each port. All right, let's Telemetry do it. Lost. So let's go to channel three. Okay. Let's just skip it. Telemetry recovered. Telemetry lost. Oh, so that's always going to show as channel one. All right. So even though we're on channel port three of the receiver, it's still on top row. Yes. 
Well, I guess that's okay. But at least we're testing it. Yep. All right. So I, I think it's unnecessary to use the individual. Cirrhosis well, box. if you only had a traditional receiver, say an AR, uh, was it AR 410? Yeah. Okay. All right. So, so this, this doesn't have any sort of S bus or anything on it. So we're going to plug in on this guy, channel one. Okay. So this is the old spectrum. Mm -hmm. the old sp and this is a five volt. So we're still going to plug into that five volt source and I'm going to switch over. The PPM, right? PWM? Yeah, so this has nothing. So even though it's bound in DSM-2, it doesn't have any sort of data, even though it's on data. It doesn't do anything because it's not a uh, Spectrum serial receiver. So go here, go there. I'm going to plug, switch over to PWM again. And, and there, there you go. go. So you're moving the radio. Yeah, I'm just moving the radio stick. And you can see it's proportional. It's not just one way or the other. Okay, so you're slowly moving up and down. All right, so to test all the channels, you have to do all You'd the You'd have to go individually. Ones. Okay. If it's PWM, which is, if you're plugging in a standard servo, it's PWM. If you're doing a three-wire connection completely to like a, a, a flight controller or something like that, it's either PPM, SBUS, or if it's Spectrum, it's a DSM 1024 or 2048. Basically guys, this is something nice for the gear, uh, the toolbox and all that. Um, leave it on the bench, bring in the toolbox, good for the field, good for at home. Uh, get two, get three, put them in stock and stuffers. And yeah, works. it's a cheap All right, so if you find value in this video, give us a big thumbs up. And this little thing, it's the M MC06. Ships directly from our shop here, right outside of Atlanta, Georgia. Little accessory yeah. for you and your buddies. Um, it's just a really nice little thing to have that can do more than just just the voltage. Yeah. And it has fancy colors, so it has yes. to be really good. Yeah.